showing in their sales. You know, it's definitely showing in their sales. So you have to think, how would somebody actually buy in person? You know, is somebody just going to walk in to an establishment and, 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 and throw down five, 10 grand without them no liking and trusting your ability or your service? You know, probably not. So there's some, there's some nurturing that needs to go on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know about you. I grew up in a really small town. I mean, it, it was the kind of thing where, you know, there were, there were probably six pizza shop and, and, and everybody went to one because he knew the, the owner knew everybody's name. Mm. They knew what he, you know, knew what they all ordered. They knew, he knew what problems were going on in their lives. He actually asked them, you know, and so that was the way the business was done. His pizza could have tasted like ass. I mean, it probably did actually, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know I was eight. It didn't, you know, it didn't matter to me, but yeah. the fact that he, you know, took the time to actually treat people like people instead of just being like, what do you want? You know, uh, made him the one everybody went to in that small town. And I see that, I see that that's happening a lot online too. Where, yeah. you know, instead of having the big gurus with tens of thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of followers, you're seeing uh, many influencers who are still making amazing livings, but you've probably yeah. never heard of them because they've got a base of, you know, 5,000 people mm -hmm. th and that's all they need. Yeah. 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 You don't need, you don't need a, a lot you know, to, to be successful. I'd be surprised. You know, Tony Robbins did this thing a long time ago when he was interviewing this guy and the guy, and, and, and he asked the guy, like, how much money do you want to, how much money do you need to live a, 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 a real life of luxury? Right. And the guy said 5 million. And so he was like, okay, 5 million. What do you, what exactly are you going to buy with that 5 million? So cut to the chase they did this whole thing and it come out to be about two and a half million that this guy needed to actually live the life that he wanted. So you'd be surprised. Like you don't need mass numbers to make big moves. You don't, I mean, it would be helpful to, to have that, you know, sort of influence, but you don't necessarily need it. And so it's definitely something that I, I, I want you guys to pay attention to, you know, you make a thousand customers happy you could probably live off of those thousand people for a very, very long time. <laughs> right. Um, so th there's yeah. a lot of great comments going on in, yeah. in, in here. I would just want to grab a couple. So Tyler said something along the lines of um, don't expect the sale, earn it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Cuts says, you know, it's a global world now. Absolutely. Um, you know, all you need is exposure. True. Um, doesn't marketing and branding have many similarities. Well, the best way to explain marketing and branding is this. Marketing is like asking somebody out on the date and branding is why they said yes. It's the, 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 best, the best way that I could explain. I like that. Right? The best way that I could explain. But yes, there are some similarities, but that's the best way to differentiate the two. Um, okay, so that's question number one. The other thing that I want to point out, I think a lot of people coming in to the marketing industry now um, they're forgetting about this industry being a very results driven business. So right. I think a lot of people find marketing to be very sexy and exciting and they jump into it with two feet, but they have no real results kind of backing up their product or service. And so that's one thing that that I took a lot of consideration for the past couple of years is, you know, I've been a killer designer for the past 13 years. I've built out a team around me to, to really help me build and grow and scale. And if you went to my website a couple of years ago, you wouldn't have saw any of my work. You just see me sort of uh, blabbing on Instagram and blabbing on YouTube but there was no real concrete evidence of how good I what really was. And so then we, we established a whole case study page, which we highlight and, and tell the story of each one of our clients. And I started putting that out there. And when I did the analytics and saw how people were interacting with my website, 
it was one of the first places where people went to learn mm -hmm. more about me and, and what I do was my case study page. So before you jump into any market, it doesn't necessarily have to be marketing. <laughs> Make sure that you have some reputable results to, to back you up. So people have an understanding of why they should hire you in the first place. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, definitely a great question. The next question I have from TJ was, What's the doc's advice to people who are just establishing their career in marketing? So, I mean, I'll give a, I'll give a short brief answer and then I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I'm going to ask Lee to, to respond as well. So the best advice that I could give is one that I just mentioned, you know, really establish some sort of a credibility, some sort of authority in the niche before you go out there and try to sell yourself because people are going to look at you and say, well, what are the results that you've gotten for your clients. And if there aren't any, chances are you're probably gonna get passed up for another company. So really pay attention to that and, and be, for, be a forever student. So if there's a marketing expert out there that you really enjoy watching and learning and, 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 and um, following, like become an apprentice, become a, um, you know, work for them for free for crying out loud right? To, to gather and gain as much education as you possibly can and then go out and test that, right? You can't forget that. Go out there and test that and then start to use some of that experience and leverage that in your marketing. Like I tell anybody who's starting out for the first time in any market segment, get out there, get your feet wet, do a couple projects on spec just to, just to get that experience and get that case study and testimonial and then leverage that to actually get paid clients. And I, I don't think you can go wrong if you go that route, honestly. So mm -hmm. Lee? <clears throat> that's, that's exactly right. And I would add to that, that you really want to go find out what your audience needs before you start building. In fact, you're going to save yourself so many headaches if you find out what it is that they need that you can provide for them before you start branding, before you start building your reputation, before you start getting your work out there, because, you know, fundamentally, if you're providing something that nobody needs or wants, you know, there's, there's no copy, there's no brand, there's no design that's going to save you. No. So, and, and, you know, and I do that by listening I mean, going into Facebook groups, going and uh, reading Amazon book reviews, finding out what people are talking about that, that they're missing, that they're not getting from existing resources mm -hmm. and then figure out how that you can fit in to what's not being provided because that way you don't have to be a commodity. You don't have to, you, know, you don't have to be one of a million people doing the same darn thing. Right. <clears throat> right. I think one of the, so here's a question that I got. Well, it's not really a question. You hear a lot of the gurus saying, you know, create a service or create a business around the problem that has not yet been solved, right? And I was thinking about that over the holiday break and saying to myself like, <clears throat> okay, so we do, we do brand strategy, we do brand development, we do brand designing, um, you know, we, we, we help people grow their influence and, 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 and monetize their influence and, and, and following. What, in all of that hasn't been solved yet. And a lot of it has, right? So a lot of it has. So how do I differentiate, right? Myself from everybody else that's doing what I'm doing. And I think it really comes down to true transparency and authenticity and really creating a story out of your business. So one thing I'm gonna do in 2020, which I never thought of in a million, like I thought of it, but I, was like, ah, maybe it's giving away too much. You know, we get into that scarcity mindset. But <clears throat> I am literally going to leverage my YouTube channel as a platform to just share with all of you what I am doing inside of my business. So next week's videos, I recorded them this morning. I'm going to be talking about text message marketing and how I'm using it. Um, I'm going to be talking about the hashtag software that I use to help me build my exposure on Instagram. Um, and I'm just going to really document this next 10 years, 
really using my channel. And I think that's a great way to differentiate mm -hmm. myself from everybody else that's doing what I'm doing. And, you know, you're going to find similarities in some of the things that I do with other folks because I'm learning from the best. And then you're also going to see me do things that nobody's doing because it's just coming from Henry and Henry wants to do something that's a little different and I'm going to try it. And if it, if it fails, it fails. Like I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to get back on a horse and do. So, you know, I think that's important for you guys to really understand, you know, as you're building and growing your brand, you know, over the next couple of years and, and, and beyond. Yeah, okay. that's definitely true. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just reading comments here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, one, one thing that I do want to underscore here is that we've spent, we've both spent more than a decade building our craft. We both know what we're doing, but we're not perfect. And we're willing to show that. And that's, you know, that's something that, that through your YouTube channel, uh, you know, through the things that I'm doing, that we're basically saying, look, you know what, you don't have to, to hit a home run every time to, you know, to be able to, to attract clients and have people see you as an authority. In fact, you know, getting it wrong sometimes, you know, I'm more than willing to, you know, if somebody says, you know what, you made a mistake here. And I go, great. That's fantastic. I love mistakes. Mm -hmm. because it gives me a chance to learn and grow. Yeah. It means I'm not I, dead yet. Yeah. Listen, there's a book that I read over the break. It's called Shut Up and Listen by Tillman Fertitta. Mm, okay. And it's a really short read. I don't read that much. I do a lot of listening. So I, I bought the audio book and I, I crushed that audio book in like two days. That's how easy it was to really consume. And I will tell you, one of the things that he said in there was brilliant. You know, he said something along the lines of, well, towards the end of the book, he talks about listening and how listening is, is definitely going to be your advantage over doing all the talking. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you a real life example. So tomorrow I have a, I have a client call with one of my NFL player clients and he's got this vision in his mind for 2020. We're jumping on a Zoom call. And I am literally pushing record and I am just letting him spew, right? I am not going to interrupt I, unless I need further clarification, but I am just going to let him talk my ear off on what it is that he wants to achieve this year. And I'm just going to take notes. And then basically what my, what my, what my uh, strategy will be is, go home over the weekend, listen to what he said. And by Monday, put together a game plan for him. So less talking, more listening. I think you're definitely, you can't go wrong, right? And, and you don't need a solution right on the spot. You know, he may ask me, well, what should I do? And my answer is going to be, I don't know yet. And I think you got to get comfortable with answering that way because you don't know yet. You know, you just got the information 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to put together a winning plan in 15 minutes? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So the point of all this is look at things for what they are in reality and not what you want them to be. And I think that was one of the big takeaways out of this book was we all want our reality to be a certain way. And the reason why we get all pissed off at ourselves is because we expect it to be that way. And the problem is, is nine times out of 10, it doesn't show up that way. And we get all, we all, we get disappointed and we get discouraged and we quit. But if you just looked at the situation for what it is in reality, changes the game, changes the game. Phenomenal. So um, what's the number one priority to create your own business? Lee, we don't have to spend a lot of time on that one. Well, it's, again, what problem are you solving? Figure that Bam. out first. Bam. Because, you know, that's what we've been talking about here is that if you're not, and I, I understand what you're saying is like a point where we're going to get to the point where every niche seems saturated, but as we, uh, as society evolves, 
old problems go away, new problems evolve, new, new problems occur. There are always going to be new problems, new ways to solve it, new people to solve it for. Yeah. And, yeah. and as you say, you know, there's your own personality and your own unique spin on things that, yeah. you know, again, motivational speakers will all say pretty much the same things. They all have pretty much the same talking points. Why does the, you know, the 50th one you hear something from resonate and the first one doesn't? It's right. personality. That's it. That's it. And I think the more we try to cover and hide that personality of yours, the worse off your business is going to be. I, I just, I'm a firm believer of that. And <clears throat> it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts to put yourself out there publicly. I get it, right? I get a lot of pushback sometimes from my family. Like you can't just go out to dinner and not post something, right? <laughs> and, right, I, I do, I get that, I get it. But at the end of the day, this is what helps me connect with my audience. Yes, I agree. Like when I go to the restroom, I don't need to put that in an IG story. But at the end of the day, this is what people want to see. They really want to see how I interact in my natural habitat, if you will, because we're all voyeurs. We all like to watch and see what's going on. But I think that's, that's, that's one strategy that I would love to see more people do, despite how scared they are of being judged. You have to get over that fear. I mean, I don't know how else to, exp how else to tell you. I mean, there's really not much more to differentiate yourself from everybody else that does what you do other than showcasing your true self. And that, that's just something I believe in wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, so but I like to say that if you emphasize the points of yourself that are relevant to your customer base or who you want to serve, that that makes things a little bit easier because I think that people get so scared of like, oh my gosh, I have to throw every aspect of myself out there. I have to throw my whole self out there, warts and all. Some of that stuff is going to be stuff that your target audience is not going to give a rip about, you know, and, and the things that you do say about yourself from a personal standpoint do need to be relevant to them. And ultimately somehow into building the kind of trust that you want to build for them to want to do business with you, because there are, there, there does have to be that in, you know, that end uh, result, that end goal in mind that you still do have to get clients uh, at the end of the day. And that's what you're working toward through all this. So, you know, as you're talking about yourself, make sure that it's relevant to them. Yeah. 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 Um, X, X, M, O, X Momo has a question, so feel free okay. to drop it. Um, Fascinated asks, you know, how are Steve Jobs and Elon Musk different from other entrepreneurs? Um, I think that their risk tolerance is off the charts. I think that they have an extremely deep risk tolerance, and that's what allows them to or I should say with Steve, you know, that's what made him just absolutely amazing. And, and Elon to this day, you know, I'll never forget that story when he sold PayPal for what is 180 million or something. I forget what the number was. It doesn't matter, but he literally took all of his money and like put it into Tesla. And like, it was insane. Like he, he was $180 million richer one day. And then the next day he was, you know, he might as well be sleeping on a couch again with no money in the bag. <laughs> that, that is a seriously high risk tolerant individual. And I think we all need to have a certain level of risk tolerance if you want to have your own business because we don't know when our next paycheck is coming. We don't, especially if you're in you know, a service-based business um, or a solopreneur of any, of any level. You don't know. So... You, you have to know that if you don't get that deal, that there's 10 more coming down the pike. And if you don't have that mindset, then that's where you really need to dive into some books to really help you put the right messaging inside of your head. Because I'm a firm believer that if you don't have this right, your business and your money 
will never be right. So, uh, all right. Can I ask you a question, Raul? Why do you both always get online? Why not? Why not? Um, why do we always get online? Why not we audience? I am not sure. Do you take someone online? Um, I don't. I'm sorry. It's probably the language barrier that's getting that's getting in in between here. Um, right. You want to take a stab at that, Lee? Or you? Sure. Um, well, uh, again, uh, Henry and I have worked together for uh, quite a number of years, and so the, we've uh, we've we've seen a lot of you know, I've seen a lot of things that go on in his business. He sees a lot that go on in mine, and we found that together that we can hit on topics that are of value to our mutual audiences. Uh, so you know, and it, the short answer to your question is that he'll start an IG live and then he'll bring me on and then we'll talk for a while. Um, you know, if you're still with Instagram, you can definitely do that too with your own guests. But you know, it's that the reason the two of us are online together on Thursdays at roughly 2 p.m. is because we planned it that way. Yeah, I, I, to add to that, Lee, I, I also want to say that this is our chance to really interact with our audience mm -hmm. and to get the questions that we, that, that the audience, that the market is struggling with in their heads mm -hmm. and it allows us to showcase our expertise and try to give you some answers that would help you get through that block. Right. That's one thing. The other, the other reason why you and I both go live together is we are both working. We are both sharing each other's audiences. So when Lee goes live with me, his audience is being notified. When I go live with Lee, my audience gets notified. So we, sh each other's audiences are both benefiting from the messaging that we're putting out. So that's how and why we go live every day because we wanna, we, one, we wanna showcase our expertise. Two, we wanna help you, right? And then three, it's, it's really helping us get a better understanding of what the market wants and needs right now so that we can create services to serve them. And that's, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. Uh, Mitney designs. I love the combo. Great info. Thank you. Um, what course do you recommend? Uh, X Momo. I would say, <laughs> I would what? say the brand yourself course. You can go to unique designs with a Z.net and get the brand yourself course. Uh, everybody's saying great combo. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I gotta say, I yeah. appreciate that. That's awesome. But yeah, that's a, so definitely. If that's if the branding is what you're after, that is the course that you need. So that was that. That stuff is phenomenal too. I've heard you know not only me but so many people that uh, uh, that have gone through uh, those programs are just like, wow, I just I can't believe how much better uh, I can represent myself now that I can actually you know have a brand that that is me. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people run into. They come, they come to you saying generally, isn't it, you know, hey, the, my brand just doesn't fit me anymore. It doesn't right. fit where I want to go. Right. Right. It's outdated or, or I haven't updated it in so long or it's not really, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable selling my products and services because it's just not in my gut. I, it doesn't feel right. Right. It's not the true value that I'm delivering. I see. I hear that a lot. You know, mm -hmm. my brand just doesn't represent me the way I want it to. And it's holding me back from really putting myself out there. And that's a shame because I, I, I went through that myself. I mean, everybody's got to start somewhere. And I remember, you know, my early design work was awful. So, you know, it, it, it evolves. But my biggest, I guess, message to all of you guys is to, really take the money that you're making and reinvest it and constantly improve. Like that's one thing that Tillman Fertitta said in his book, like he always built up a war chest of cash. So when he saw deals that other people couldn't make because they didn't have the liquid cash to buy it, he could swoop in and get it because he, he saved his money and reinvested it. Hmm. You know, the guy owns 600 restaurants. <laughs> in 38 states holy smokes yeah i mean it's nuts he owns six casinos oh. he took over the online betting world like it's insane so um here's a question that i thought you could really 
shed some light and go as deep as you want, because I know that you're over there right now crushing it. And I, I, I could see you con like considerably gaining a lot of influence over there. Mm -hmm. um, but is LinkedIn important? That was the question. Is LinkedIn important? Is that where your audience is? That's it. I mean, that, honestly, it, uh, there's a whole gold rush thing going on right now. And it's, you know, I, I hear over and over again that, you know, if you don't get in that LinkedIn, but you know, this time next year, it's going to be impossible to build an audience on LinkedIn, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Uh, for me, it's working right now. Um, but what's working is the old fashioned, slow, tedious, time consuming approach of making connections one on one and actually taking time to have you know, private message conversations with them of saying, you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll get on you, uh, a zoom with you for 15 minutes and, and help you with one of your copywriting problems. Sure. You know, with the understanding that if it, if it goes any further than that, then we need to talk money. Uh, and, you know, really just slowly building a network. No, I mean, it, it I went from about, I think I had 700, contacts when, or connections when I started. Um, I'm just crossing the 1800 line uh, about a month later. Uh, so that's, I mean, you know, it's, it's at 1100 connections, but that's still uh, what, you know, more than double what I had. And more importantly, it's putting about three calls a week on my calendar, which isn't, you know, if you're, depending on how much you're charging for your services, three calls a week could be nothing or it could be more than you can handle. Yeah. So, you know, and for me, it's just right. So I don't have to put like, put the gas, just push the gas pedal any harder. Just keep putting out what I'm doing and just being a resource to people. Yeah. I think that's really important. I mean, when you are on any social media platform and you are trying to generate lead, which will eventually convert to sale, really just putting your putting the time in to nurturing that relationship as if you were meeting somebody for the first time in person. I mean, it takes that kind of connection and that kind of work to further the conversation into a sales conversation. I mean, I wish that there was an easy button. We talk about that all the time, but like, I wish you could just push a button and, it immediately helps you know, like, and trust somebody for you to buy it from them, but it, it's not the case. So yeah, you, you mm -hmm. have to really put in that work. And I'm actually scheduling blocks of time on my calendar this year on a weekly basis to go into certain groups and provide value where I can tell stories, um, share some insights, uh, answer questions, whatever the case may be, just to con just to have a presence in that group to provide value and hopefully make some connections and some business connections and hopefully some sales down the pike. I mean, I'd be lying to you to say I'm going in there, you know, uh, as a charity to just help as many people as I can. I no, I have to put food on the table for my family. <laughs> That's it at yeah. the end of the day. So, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. I'm not going to hide that. That's what we're doing this for. You know, we, we, we want to build up that relationship with you so that you can trust us with doing a great job for your business and helping you get what you want at the end of the story, at the end of the day. So really good stuff here. So um, somebody asked if networking was really, really important. And I saw somebody respond, I don't think so, uh, but networking makes everything easier these days. I would, I would compete with that answer. I would say, I think networking and who you know um, is extremely important in today's world. I think the reason why certain people are at different levels in their career and you know revenues is because of the relationships that they've connected with and built. You know, I had this conversation with with one of my coaches about uh, a certain person that's doing extremely well, has a hundred plus million dollar business, and I said, "What? How? What makes me so different from this person?" 
I feel like we both come from the same sort of grassroots and right. We both have just about as much time in the game as, as, as each other. Like, why is he doing a hundred mil a year? And I'm not. And she said the relationships that he established, he established some great relationships with some key players. And now it's a good old boys club. And they all raise each other up. I can't, I can't mock that. I can't knock that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a phenomenal strategy. And, you know, God bless him and good for him. I'm happy for him. I'm not, you know, I, I think it's fantastic what he's doing. And, and, but that was a, that was a wake up call for me is building that network and leveraging that network and going from there. What about you, Lee? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the alternative to building a network is just churn and burn. I mean, it's, you're, you know, what are you trying to do? I mean, you, are you going to spend, spend your entire profit on Facebook ads to get new customers? I mean, because if you're not building a relationship, if you're not building those networks, then how are you going to keep people who are going to come back and buy from you over and over again? You can't just sit down and sit there and say, you know, look, my product's so good. People will just keep coming back. It doesn't work that way anymore. No, it's a good, that's a great point. I want to make this point, which I, I, I really gathered up over the holiday kind of break was I'm sitting there over, I think it was the day after Christmas Eve. I'm sorry, the day after Christmas day. And I'm sitting here going, how can I help my following and my current customers bring in the new year with like a bang, like really help them get on stock and really give them the knowledge that they need to, to grow, sort of kick off the new year, you know, on, on, a, on a really strong momentum. And I said, you have all these digital products on your website that you sell, you know, uh, pretty consistently, but they're all like one-off sort of sales, right? What if, so I said to myself, what if I bundle everything together, discount it like 300 bucks, help them save a couple dollars and put that out there. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So it took me a couple hours to get the funnel right inside of click funnels and, you know, get all the deliverables on one page. So somebody could just, once they pay, they get to the next page and they hit download and downloads all the, all the offerings. But Son of a bitch. I put all that together. And right before New Year's Eve, I think it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. I, I sent an email out to my list. And sure as shit. Boom. Stripe notification. Stripe notification. Stripe, <laughs> stripe notification of sales. And I'm like, bam. This is what you have to do in order to grow and and really move with the times how much value can you deliver bottom line that is the question and you really have to do the, the homework and i think that's where people are getting really tripped up and stumped is they don't know who their ideal customer is and they're trying to throw shit against the wall to see if it sticks and that is the worst worst plan I've ever heard in my life. And that's something that you really, we really need to work on in 2020 if we want to grow and scale any business. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of us get into that because we didn't really build our intention, our businesses intentionally to begin with. I mean, again, I know that I did, you know, I started mine general mostly to get out of a corporate business. Uh, or sorry, out of a corporate job. And, you know, while that worked, you know, I didn't take the time to build all the, uh, that around me, that structure that would have made this grow a lot faster if I had if taken the time to ask the right questions in the beginning. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's kind of it's hard to, to uh, you know, to mud jack a skyscraper, <laughs> put a freaking foundation under it. Because, you yeah. Know, yeah. It, but that's it, what we end gotta, up doing. That's it. I mean, if you want to build that, that mansion, you got to have the foundation to, to hold it, to hold right. it up. Here's a great question by Four Ways Media. What's your opinion on people who constantly message you on Instagram with questions to do with your posts, even when the answer is within the caption or actually in the post, if that makes sense? I get this all the time. 
Do you, mm-hmm. Lee, you want to take a step? Go ahead. Go right ahead. I okay, don't get as so, much of that. So I get a ton of DMs with questions and, you know, here's the deal. And, and this is the first time I'm actually going to let this fly just raw off the cuff. If you want to get my attention on Instagram, do not DM me with hi. Don't. That is the quickest way for me to go like this. (laughs) Delete. I'm not trying to be a comedian here, but yeah, our attention spans and our, our, our ability to focus has gone way down. So if I get a DM with somebody that just says, hi, I don't know why you're reaching out. And my, 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 my scam meter goes off. My, Mm. my spam meter goes off and I don't have time for it. So I just delete. So if you want to get my attention, you better put a little, you don't have to write a novel. That's not what I'm saying either, but in five or six lines, can you put out there why it is you're reaching out to me and I will get back to you with an answer as soon as I possibly can. Now, if you have an answer in the caption or, or the post delivers the answer mm-hmm. out of courtesy and respect, it would take me three seconds for me to say answers in the caption send. Just so I'm not ignoring them. Right. I, I, I hate to be ignored. So I would say something along those lines, R- acknowledge them. Hey, thanks for reaching out. The answer's in the caption. Send. And let them go back and reread the caption. It's not your responsibility to re-answer the question. It's not. Especially when you've already answered it. So one of my 2020 goals is to really not make myself as accessible as I used to. Now, you guys may be thinking, you're absolutely crazy. This is going against everything that a lot of these big guys say, you know, answer every question, answer every DM, answer. You can be my guest. But if there's something that my team can handle for you, you bet your ass I'm going to let them answer it or get you in the right direction before you get to me. Because I only want to work with serious players. So you're not going to be able to knock on my door and come waltzing in like you used to. I don't have an open door policy and it's going to remain that way because what I found last year and the year before was I got my time wasted a lot. And some people came in that door that shouldn't have come through that door. And I'm not pointing fingers. That's my responsibility. No one else's. So I need to take more responsibility for that. And I'm just going to have gatekeepers now. And that's how I'm going to run my business. Why? Because that's the way I want to run it. There's no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, Lee. No, I don't know that I really have anything to add to that. I mean, you make, you make perfect sense and it's what works for you and your business. And, you know, I don't, see any reason anybody should argue with that no here's a good question for you lee yep your thoughts your thoughts on the phrase under promise and over deliver um it's literary flab Mm. i don't know how so what's it mean be specific hmm I mean, what, you know, in other words, in what context, in any context that you could use that, you could be more specific. There you go. Because you know? there's a big difference between a cat and a sweating saber tooth tiger with blood dripping from if it's, you know, the fangs that's, you know, has just inches from you with its hot breath stinking up your face and fogging your glasses and whatnot. You know, it's details. So, you know, how are you undervalued or, you know, how are you over delivering and, you know, under promising? What does that mean for the customer? Because otherwise it's just an empty catchphrase. Yeah. You know, listen, let me take a stab at this. Okay. You know, one of the things that I would, my, my thoughts on this phrase is this. Try not to take off 
try not to take on more than you can chew, right? Because that's going to get you into problems. You know, uh, I hear it all the time. People take on these projects that are way over their heads and then halfway through everything goes to hell in a handbasket. And next thing you know, there's ripoff reports being wrote, wrote about them and negative, negative, um, you know, uh, things being said about them on the internet and so on and so forth. And it's a disaster. You know, one of the things that I try to do to the best of my ability every time, and I shouldn't say try, I got to watch my language. Everything that I, a lot of times when I am on a sales call, I am qualifying that client just as much as they're trying to qualify me for the job. So I'm going to ask you a lot of why questions to the point that I feel really comfortable with taking you on as a client and spending the next 100, 150, 200 hours with you. So that's, that's something that I would strongly advise you to do prior to taking on any new clients, right? Number two, what I would say is this. If you can over deliver, start with simple, right? You tell somebody something's going to be due on Friday, hit them up on Thursday and say it's done. When do you, when do you want to see it? Small things like that. Right. If they're a, a, a very high touch client, they want to know every step of the way or they, they want to put in their two cents every step of the way. Allow them to do that. It may not feel like a lot, but you are. You're doing things psychologically to them that they will love you for. Right. I'll give you a quick example. I'm working with a, a tech startup right now. I've worked with this individual in the past, very high touch guy, knows what he wants and is just looking for the executioner to come in and take his vision and make it a reality, right? He's very upfront with that. Listen, I'm going to be very hands-on with this project. If that's not something that you want to do, I can find somebody to do that, right? Now, I happen to really like these, this particular person, right? I wouldn't normally take this project on because... I really like the creative freedom, right? You hire me for a reason. I'm going to deliver. I'm going to make sure that you're happy or we're going to finish it until you are, right? That's my mentality, right? But I really happen to work well with this individual. So I took on the project and I told my, my team up front, this is a high touch guy. He's going to tell us how to curve the L in the word Lori. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so let's not go upstream here. Let's not try to swim upstream here. Let's go with the current and let's help him get what he wants. And so that's exactly what we did. And um, he had sp specifically with a logo, he had a very specific concept that he wanted done for the icon of the logo. And we gave him some suggestions and he was like, I don't like it. I like this. Can you re replicate this? And I said to the team, let's do it. And then let's take it a step further and show him the logo in application so he can see the logo in action. That's what I mean by, by over delivering, right? Mm. He wasn't expecting that. And when he got that, he fell off his chair. And I have it on, rec I have it on record. He goes, that's the logo right there. <laughs> we could have went on for weeks, Lee trying to redo that logo to my standard and you know, right? No, just give them what yep. they want. Yep. And I, I think that's a way of over delivering that we're not, we're, we're, we're overseeing. Yep. Yep. And I, I'm glad you took it in that direction. Cause I was thinking, I was, I was thinking of the phrase from a copy perspective, which was what totally what made me go. Nope. <laughs> that's right. I, I totally get your, uh, the different perspective on the question. So I apologize for, you know, copywriter brain just took that and went, no, get it out of <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. happens. Yeah. Four Ways Media has some really great questions here. I cool. mean, I got about another eight minutes until I got to wrap up, but. Yeah, yeah. Same. I, we, we might get kicked off of, of, of Instagram at that point because I think we only get about an hour here. Mm. But um, last question. Okay, last question. What's both your thoughts on outsourcing? Lee? 
this is just this is something that I'm struggling with in my own business. So uh, keep in mind that that for me, it's going to be the an- the answer of an amateur who screwed a lot of stuff up. Um, I'm finding that there are a lot of things that it just financially doesn't make sense for me to do by myself anymore. Uh, maybe they did when I started my business and didn't have the resources, but now I look at the time that I put in it versus what I could do with that time, other places to build my business and going, nope, it's not a match. And if it's not a match, then that's where I'm looking at outsourcing. Uh, beyond that, uh, I, I'm not a master at that. I'm a terribly disorganized person who's learning to be disorder or learning to be more organized. So, uh, I'm hoping that Henry's got more useful answers for you on that one. <laughs> I, I just whiffed. No, no, it's okay. Listen, it, everything is a is a work in progress, and I think everything is could be improved. Okay, and I'm I'm actually I want to congratulate you for actually saying that out loud and publicly, because ninety nine point nine percent of the people will try to cover that up as if. They got it all under control. Mm-hmm. And you transparently said, I don't. And that just takes a lot of balls. And I, I, I want to say thank you for putting that out there because, again, that shows your true self. And that's what branding is all about. And I think you, you've done a really good job with just execute. Well, I should say, like, just telling people the real answer, the real deal, what's going on. Now, my answer to that is, I believe that is it is an absolute must to outsource you uh, outsource your your service or outsource everything. <laughs> 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 so so for example, I'll, I'll give you a funny story. So back in the day when I first got into funnel design, I took jobs on and I said I could do this. No problem. It's just like designing a website. But I was the one that had to come up with the copy and I'm no copywriter. And at the time I knew nothing about copywriting, nothing. Okay. And I took these jobs on and I got my ass. So I handed to me <laughs> when I could have easily charged more for the project, outsourced the copy to Lee have him come back with me, have him come back a week and a half later with the copy and then me design it back when I was actually designing, Mm -hmm. right? And then I'd have the job done, right? So now I outsource everything. I outsource my research. I outsource my copy. I outsource my design. Now, when I say outsource, I have a team that I've established over the past five years. So these team members have been with me for a half a decade. So, but I am, I am outsourcing a majority of my work so that I can do this because this is what I love to do. I love connecting with my audience. I love talking in front of people. I love design, uh, creating videos, right? If I tried to edit and, and, and optimize my YouTube videos, do all the design work, run all the copy, do all the coding, I'd be dead. <laughs> There's no way in hell I'd be able to do it. <laughs> and so, and people think I'm crazy for outsourcing my research. I have two people on my team that all they do all week long is research competitors and research tactics and strategies that we can implement right away if need be. Nice. So I get literally a week's worth of research given to me every Monday outlined. Here's what I think we should be doing. That is a huge time saver, guys, because it's like putting a ravenous lion in a cage during feeding time and dangling the steak outside of the cage. (laughs) If you're trying to get me to do research, like substantial deep research, there's no way in hell I'm going to I'm going to be able to do that and I know it. And that's half the battle right. is knowing that I'm not a good researcher. So if I'm not a good researcher, I got I need a, a team member to help me do that because they love that shit. <laughs> they love like 
why not put that person on your team and pay them for that? The amount of money you're going to save in the long run far exceeds the time for you to do it and hating every minute of it. Yep. So I say this all the time. People come to me like, yeah, I, I, the reason why I hired you to build my funnel and to help me with this strategy is because I would have not known where to go from the start. And it's not a good use of my time. I've heard that a thousand times. I'm sure you heard that too, Lee. Oh yeah. Why I'm hiring you is because what you do is not a good use of my time. Right. So that tells me a couple things. One is their time is more valuable than their money. So let's give them their time back. Right. So exactly. very great, very exactly awesome right. question. Very good question. So four ways media, I want to give you a huge shout out for giving us some really great questions, really, really great questions. And everyone else that contributed today on Instagram, phenomenal, phenomenal questions. I really appreciate you guys. Um, Lee, do you want to send anybody your way if uh, they want to learn more about you? Oh, yeah, cool. So uh, LeeRoley.com. Uh, I'm pretty active, as you said, over on Instagram, uh, the Lee Roley over there. Uh, and in just about a week, I'm going to be taking the first people into the free fundamentals copywriting program over at Copybrain University. So uh, having a few of those Kajabi issues that I'm trying to figure out, but I think within a week, we'll have that all sorted out and have people ready to come in. But the fundamentals modules are all going to be totally free. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to do some basic copywriting in a pinch or as a career, come on over. I'd love to have you. Awesome. 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 And there you have it, guys. One of the things that I do want to ask you guys is my goal for 2020 is to get 10,000 subscribers over there on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, just head over to YouTube, type in the brand doctor, and you'll see my, my channel come up. If you can hit subscribe for me, you're going to find a lot of long, longer form content there. Um, that's really relevant to anybody who wants to build a profitable and reputable brand. So if you could do that for me, that would be awesome. And then the other thing was I did want to introduce you to that uh, learning on demand package bundle that I mentioned earlier. If you go to unique designs with a Z at the end, not an S dot net backslash bundle, you will get access to all, I think there's 14 trainings and master classes in total. Um, and again, it's a huge steep discount. I discounted everything $300. Um, so it is a phenomenal deal. If you want to go over there right now and support uh, unique designs and the brand doctor so that we can take that money and create better and bigger products for you guys to help you build your brand. That'd be awesome. So have an amazing day guys. And uh, we'll catch you next Thursday at 2 PM Eastern. Sounds good, man. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. All right. Dun.